First, prepare your clay, and I will mention in a little bit why I prefer the ultralight. Uh, number one, make sure you have no fold lines on the area of the clay that you'll put in the mold. Then press it really, really, really well in there. You can use either a cosmetic sponge or you can use a uh, wax paper and then simply trim out the excess clay. As you can see, the mold is very um, firm not super firm though you can still bend it pretty well but it's not like one of those soft like one of those sugar craft now as a piece of advice if you want to do um, a fridge magnet at this point place the fridge magnet the magnet part in and then you can take it out after you're done before baking so the magnet wouldn't get messed up by the baking thing then comes the fun part and you saw that the the clay came out of the mold even without using any kind of release these molds are fabulous now let's uh, start the fun part and that is coloring our little cat and i'll do two cats for you just to show you that you can um, customize it however you want i'm going to make a siamese cat and because i don't have really a pure tan i'm going to add a uh, kind of a beige uh, chalk pastel with a little bit of a darker beige and i am coloring uh, all the body of the cat first and uh, tips if you are using chalk pastels to color you saw how i'm grating from the chalk pastel but uh, when you buy your chalk pastel always look for soft that's what you want the ones the the chalk pastels that are not soft uh they don't color the clay as well as the soft ones and um, after i did my uh, body coloring i am taking two shades two different uh, shades of brown and i am coloring the points of the siamese and that is the face uh, the tip of the paws and the tail and I will be using a little bit of a darker brown for the middle of the face and for the very tip of the uh, paws and of the tail. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Make sure that you have covered all the areas real good. Oh yes, and of course you have to put some brown on the ears. Uh, but leave a last the top of the head and there's well you will need again um, the mix of the two beiges and um, you can put a little bit more uh, brown in the mix but not a lot and use that only on the top of the head and on the spine of the cat if you want it to look uh, fairly realistic and once you're done with uh, coloring the body you'll need a little bit of pink and mix it with a tad of the lighter beige to do the inside of the ears uh, don't use just pure pink because cat's ears inside are not just pure pink they do have a little bit of fur in there and to make everything look uh, perfect or close to perfect uh, clean your brush really good and then go with the brush uh, all over the body to uh, mix. You will not get uh, colors mixed one with the other. It's very well uh, stuck to the clay. All you're doing right now is just uh, sticking the um, uh, chalk pastel dust better into the clay and making it um, more colorful this way. Now let's do a tabby cat for a tabby cat i am first um, i pretty much mixed a little bit of white with a little bit of the lighter beige that i can had and then i will be doing first the face and the tip of the paws and then i will make stripes with it now you see how the uh, there are little indentations where the fur is so you must make sure that you also make um, paintbrush movements in the direction of the uh, fur in so you can have all your chalk pastel powder go in all the little recesses there 
then once you do um, your tan part of the tabby you can take a little bit of dark gray and then do the other stripes and these other stripes won't be just like this you'll see here in a little bit how we are going to make them even nicer looking you don't have to insist at this point too much on the stripes on the head because we are going to uh, get them looking better here in a minute then with uh, some black I am actually enhancing the stripes and don't worry there will not be that much black left there because remember that I've already placed the dark gray so uh, there's not a lot of black that's going to adhere to the clay it's going to just enhance a little bit the stripes um, after you're done uh, placing the black uh, blow over the um, uh, little cat so any excess clay will be blown away and now again uh, use the gray one more time and rub with a paintbrush all over that way the stripes will look more natural and of course we do the little pink ears and on this one actually I'm going to do a little bit of customization remember how I showed you how you can customize all uh, face molds to make them look different not to have everything you know like copy machine so I am going to enhance a little bit the nose uh, make the nose bridge a little bit shorter and then I'm going to make the cat smile and I'm doing that by simply uh, reinforcing the the mouth area and now you see how I'm making the the bridge a little bit more recessed and making sure that the nose is nicely done there and the upper lip with the little division and now we are making the smile and of course if you want you can um, enhance a little bit the look of the ears now let's do a little Yorkie and you can see that all the molds uh, react exactly the same to the clay and uh, to tell you real quick why I prefer the ultralight with molds is uh, number one it works beautifully in molds and most of the time it doesn't need a release agent and number two uh, because it is volume per volume about twice cheaper than regular clay and then you can also use in uh, molds like this that are very deep now for the little Yorkie I am uh, mixing some light gray with a little bit of darker gray and with a touch of beige for the belly area the paw tips the tip of the tail the mane the chest and the um, half of the face and that would be the bottom half pretty much from the nose down For the darker area of the coat I am mixing actually if you don't have it's called bluestone it's a it's a hue of gray that's got a little bit of blue in it but if you don't have it just mix a little bit of gray with a light blue and then uh, just put it on 
all the areas where you did not put on the beige -ish part. You don't have to worry about the, the dog really about making the inside of the ears pink because generally they are fairly fluffy in that area and most of the time the dog's ears are uh, skin is colored inside the same as it's colored on the outside of the ears. So they are pretty ready to go in the oven and I baked them for 40 minutes. Now, once they are baked and cooled, let's do a little bit of enhancement, but first let's do the white of the eyes because everything has to be uh, well dried before doing anything else. So I'm going to first put on all three of them the white on the eyes. And then once the white is dry, I am going to make the irises and of course for the Siamese it's going to be blue, for the tabby it's going to be green and for the dog it's going to be just plain black because generally those tiny dogs only when you look very close you see that they have an iris and it's a very dark brown. Now let's do a little bit of enhancing and I am using black acrylic wash that means that I have very little color in fact on my paintbrush it's very washed out to enhance those stripes on the tabby and not only that but at this point I am going because I am not very happy with how the stripes came up on the head I'm going to enhance them with a little bit of acrylic paint. And remember, the paint has to be uh, very diluted on your paintbrush. Don't use a blob of paint. Just dilute it as well as you can. As you can see, I'm dipping my paintbrush all the time. And if I see that I have a little bit too much, I will dry it on that uh, paper towel. And I'm going to enhance a little bit the little Yorkie as well. And of course, the Yorkie needed the nose to be black, I forgot to say at the, at the time. But uh, if you think it's a little bit too dark, you can always use your uh, paper towel to absorb the excess. And once you're done, you actually want, so I still have to do the pupils on the eyes on the cats, but uh, once you're done with everything, you still want to stick them back in the oven for about 15 minutes to have all the acrylic really nicely uh, bonded with the polymer clay. On the tabby, I also uh, decided to do that little um, eyeliner that most tabbies have just because it the eyes area looked a little bit too washed out and 
that's what tabbies have the is their prettiest feature is that most of them have their eyes lined with black like if they were wearing eyeliner so again I'm using a wash of black and I am going to uh, underline all the inside area of the eyes of the tabby and make a little bit of a uh, tail at the end of the eyes Once they are baked and cooled, uh, I simply used, uh, I didn't want to take out the golden satin, so this is simply Sculpey varnish satin down, not gloss, because I don't want them to look very, very shiny. I just want them to look like a regular ceramic uh, ornament. And uh, talking about that, what can they be used for? Of course, you can make fridge magnets. You can put them as decorations or on um, uh, cabinet doors, uh, on drawers, in your children or grandchildren's uh, room as various decorations on all kinds of things on little boxes on your pets uh, area but they are absolutely uh, adorable and they would also make a very interesting customized gifts for your friends if you have a friend who has uh, cats you can uh, color the cats the same as their cats are colored and then make them a gift of fridge magnets and it would uh, show a lot of thought thoughtfulness but i am really in love with these little molds and they are so adorable now you can place the sculpey before baking or you can place it after baking uh, the scalpy glaze doesn't really require baking, but I prefer to bake it. The, only, the last touch would be to put some uh, very, very shiny, glossy varnish just on the eyes. You can actually use UV resin. And then once that is dried, uh, you are good to go. If course, if, of course, if you did the fridge magnet, just uh, glue the magnet in the end.